Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and today we are reviewing, upon your request, a video by a fellow content creator by the name of Jesse N. Camp and the video is titled I trained like a samurai for a day. Now I'm not familiar with this creator that much in the sense that was, first of all the video was posted a year ago, that's me, alright, <laughs> you know, always on point with my content creation, reacting to things when they are irrelevant, yeah. But anyway, so he seems to have a martial arts focused channel, he has 949 thousand subscribers and view wise he does an excellent job like he gets spectacular views and uh, I have to say you know I always respect that when people can pull that off because I mean it's not easy anyways for what I can understand as I say I don't know much about him I might have watched something like many years ago if he did something where he was trying Taekwondo maybe it was him I'm not quite sure but what I can see is that he is a karate guy karate being one of my favorite martial arts I really sympathize with that but of course in this case we are trying to see the historical relevancy of the video in question where he went somewhere to uh, train as a samurai. So is this a clickbaity title or is there any foundation both from a historical standpoint and of course from a martial standpoint to this claim? And that's what we're going to review. So the video's got 1.6 million views as of now and we'll see how it goes. Today I'm training like a real samurai. <laughs> because ever since I saw my first samurai movie... Okay, so already at the beginning I see that he's wearing samurai armor and it looks good, like that looks museum quality. Samurai armor, similar to the suit of armor that I've got, that I'm gonna show you here, that already looks kinda good. When it comes to the moves, I see that he is being trained by someone. So someone who is supposed to be an expert is showing him, I suppose, some moves. So very much will depend on who this person is and what sort of qualification they have. And not that I consider myself to be an authority on this, absolutely not. But you did ask me my opinion, so, you know, I'm just going with that. Let's go. I wanted to be one myself. We prepared all this for you. But I never expected this. This looks so different compared to what you see in the movies. Usually, I have to say that when it comes to the representation of samurai armor and samurai combat, but in this case he's talking about the armor, I suppose. I don't know if he was talking about the movement that he was showing. Usually movies, when it comes to the samurai and Japanese feudal time and combat, they represent it pretty well, including video games, particularly if you compare it to how horribly misrepresented instead medieval European and night combat tends to be on both movies and video games. But I understand if he's showing him some moves that he wasn't expecting, or the armor perhaps, that he would feel that way. So, so far, pretty cool. Let's continue. Hey! Hello! This is Dr. Kazem Sugari, Japanese. Okay, so here we got something interesting. So they are in Berlin. I thought it would go to Japan, but then again, yeah, if they have experts in Berlin, there's nothing wrong. I'm sure they do. So who is this person? He said doctor. Let's see. Japanese martial arts expert and historian at the Berlin Samurai Museum. This will be so much fun. Yes, after you. Okay, he said doctor, he said a historian, I suppose some sort of PhD. They have a Samurai Museum in Berlin, I imagine he's the curator. Very strange actually the way he said hello though, because I mean, he did this, which kind of made it look more like Kung Fu to me. Let's see, since he says he's a Japanese martial arts expert, I wish he would give us more. Perhaps he would, he will give us more, but I wish he would tell us, okay, he's an expert of what martial arts. So let's see if he's gonna tell us that. Very important. If he doesn't, I'll do a little research myself off camera. Before training, he wants to teach me the truth about the samurai. For example, their swords used to look like this. What? cause them to curve the sword with your horse. All right, so before we get, we see how he answers this question, generally he's like fighting from horseback. So he didn't tell us about who he is and what sort of martial training he has. He might do it later on the video. It's a very important thing. So I'm gonna look it up now myself so we have an idea of who is giving the instruction here. All right, so for what I can see with a little Google foo, I could see that this guy does have a doctorate, a PhD in Japanese history. But when it comes to his martial training, however, all I could find is 30 years of experience in ninjutsu. And if that's all there is to it, if this guy has no training in actual koryu, for example, just to say one, Katori Shintoryu would be a great choice, but in general, any koryu style would be a good choice in this case. If it's all coming from the perspective of ninjutsu, we're already not starting in a great way. I don't know that. Perhaps they'll give us more information. That's what I could find. He also wrote a few books on ninjutsu, so it seems like that's his area of expertise. When it comes to ninjutsu martial arts, I'm not hating on ninjutsu. If you're practicing it and you enjoy it, fantastic. But if you like it, it's good for you. I respect that. There are some ninjutsu styles that claim connection to the feudal period, but one thing is to claim it, and one thing is to prove it, that there is an actual continuous lineage. Since considering the fact that ninjutsu at the end of the day is espionage, it's 
it's not very easy to find documentation, as you can imagine. There is some, there are some scrolls, but there isn't a lot of documentation to really verify the veracity of these claims. So, and that's why I would normally re uh, recommend, if you want to learn to fight in a similar way as a samurai would have, then it would be a good idea to perhaps study a few styles of Koryu, one of which is Katori Shintoryu, but there are many others. I think Kenjutsu would be a better choice. Using those kind of movements are more easy than doing ah, things like that. Yeah. But the sword... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, they're gonna keep the answers simple, so I'm not gonna... Because it's, it's, it's a small infotainment video, it's not like a deep dive into the historical situation, so... And he has a French accent also, I was expecting something different. At least to me, it sounds a bit French. Yes, the original straight sword of the pre-samurai era, I would have underlined that, will eventually evolve into curved sword, one of the reason being the fact that they're easier to use from horseback, but as a quick answer is okay. As I say, I would have specified that samurai didn't really fight with straight sword. They precede the samurai era. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page. With as little as a $5 support, you can help us ensure that we can continue to produce high quality and high researched content. And at the same time, you get access to polls, extra videos, unlisted streams, and much more. Thank you so much. Wasn't the main weapon of the samurai? What was the main weapon? First, bow and arrow, but spear and ah, naginata. Okay. You use the sword only and if only you have no weapon around you. The samurai used. Yeah, that's a, that's a good answer that he gave. So I'm happy with the answer. I also like the host, by the way, Jesse Enkamp. I think he's really cool. He sounds very humble, like he wants to. I mean, this guy still has a lot of experience in in karate. He's a martial artist, but I like his attitude. He seems to be like he's there to learn. The fact that the expert, the historian, says that the katana is not, in fact, the sword is not the main weapon of a samurai, and there are many other weapons such as the bow, the naginata, as he's saying, and there are a few others, even guns. At one point, you know, much looked like arquebuses, as we discussed on this channel very often and then the katana is a backup weapon so that was explained correctly I'm very happy to see that not that I need to kind of peer review <laughs> this guy is you know he's an expert but because many times we see particularly with curator guides in the past link in the description I've seen people that know absolutely nothing even though they are museum curators in important galleries and then they tell you myths about knights not being able to move and being a tin can and th that nonsense then i'm happy that instead the inf historical information that he's spreading seems to be accurate many different weapons wait 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 this is an axe with, with a spear different kind of kama kusarigama different kind of secret weapon not sure about the i mean yes yeah, secret weapon existed kusarigama is kind of debated though whether it was actually a weapon or whether it was more of some kind of weapon slash tool that was used by kind of policing for policing or that it wouldn't it probably it might have not even have been a thing up to kind of late in the history of japan so kusarigama is a little bit of a mm, maybe that there, there are contrasting ideas but everything else seems to be cool and very nice about the axe spear combination I, i'll be honest with you first time i see that. Also crossbow. Ooh, a blowgun. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they also used guns. This is like a shotgun. Yes, yeah, like a shotgun. You can see the impact. Okay, let me be pedantic. It's not like a shotgun. But yeah, he means the looks. So yeah, it's fine. I won't be pedantic. <laughs> of course, they shoot aquabus balls. So very different matchlock and flintlock eventually. But it's a different type of firearm. But I won't be pedantic. I won't be the usual me. My second name. I suppose. They mentioned guns, appreciate that. Of the bullet on the top of the helmet. So someone actually shot the samurai in the head. Yes. yes. <laughs> but some samurai can see... Very cool. So when it comes to the, this idea, sometimes we see in museums that some samurai suits of armor have got bullet marks, or should I say aquabus balls marks. That's not always the case. I don't know about the history of this specific suit of armor that they're showing here, but it's not always the case that someone actually shot that samurai, whether it be on the helmet or whether it be on the torso, during a battle. Sometimes, instead, it's a situation that it's a tameshi gusoku, so it's a tested suit, in the sense that they would make the suit of armor bulletproof, and that's in fact where the expression bulletproof comes from, because we did this in Europe as well. You would shoot it with a bullet, or, or a ball in that case, and then, you know, the mark would be a proof to the person who is buying it, whether it be a knight, whether it be a samurai, that yes, indeed, this weapon is bulletproof proof that could be the case and i don't know the history of this specific i wish it kind of expanded a little bit on that but it's possible that they just shot it to see see the helmet will provide protection from at a certain distance you know from point blank good luck with that but at a certain distance which is in reason reasonable distance it would provide protection from early firearms very cool wait what is this this is a gun somebody would think this is like a blade but they pull it out and it's a gun curious about these giant horns you have to 
two kind of armor. Okay, so very nice about the fake blade gun combination. Once again, something I hadn't seen. I, I've got to say, this museum in Berlin seems to be something I would really, really enjoy. So I'm, I'm liking the ride so far. Very, very fun. So they went now to the sort of helmet decorations and um, Kawari Gusoku or Kawari Kabuto, that's what you usually call them. It's kind of, it means strange helmets. And they had these very elaborate decorations on the top. Let's see how he explains that. So far it's good though. Yeah. One that you use on the battlefield and one for the parade because one needs to reflect your rank. So the bigger the horns... Bigger the horns, bigger the position. Size maybe. doesn't matter, or does it? In well, this? You know, that's a good question. I think in Because over there, those are huge. Yes. How do you walk when you wear this? You cannot show any weakness. It's a very cruel and raw world. And very true. So what he's saying is, is correct. I'd like to underline, though, that one thing is important to say is oftentimes when we see these very big, gigantic, elaborate decorations of the helmets, they're usually made of very thin, almost paper-like materials. And if there is any metal involved, it tends to be empty in the sense that you shouldn't imagine that that thing weighs a ton. So that's another important. So yes, you can walk with it. It's awkward. You wouldn't really wear it on a battlefield. But for the period of peace, for the Edo period, Kawari Kabuto become a thing. I do have a dedicated video from a few years ago. Link in the description again and they become a thing because now as he was correctly saying you're showing during parade or in general when you're wearing the armor you're showing not only your rank like he's saying but your wealth and success as a samurai because you can afford things that are impressive from an artistic perspective but also because they are expensive and therefore you're showing off this is how successful I am from a, a monetary and also purchasing power standpoint what we practice martial art come from that world yeah look at that you have a spear you cut the head Wait, so he took his head as a trophy? You have the people who's gonna fight on the battlefield and take the head, yeah. And then there is the people who come after and take the head and pretend. Yeah. Very true. So uh, yeah, this guy knows his thing. Very much appreciate that. From my historical standpoint, I still don't know his martial position on this and I'm still a little iffy about that. But when it comes to historical education, I mean, if this guy is the guide or the curator at this museum, then yeah, you're gonna get some a good tour. One thing I'd like to say is that the, yeah, the head is not exactly a trophy. The head is something that you take from the enemy on a battlefield in order to get rewards from your feudal lord. So it's sort of a proof or a demonstration of how successful you have been on the battlefield and your martial prowess, if you will. So if as a samurai you manage to cut off several heads, or even more importantly, the head of someone that has rank, like the head of of an important samurai on the opposition clan and then you bring it back to your lord at the end of the battle you will be rewarded accordingly and it is also true that some people faked it and i don't know if he's going to mention this but one thing that happened is that at one point removing heads was becoming so much of a hassle that they said you know what forget about the heads only do it for important people when you're just removing the head of people who don't really matter that much like ashigaru or low-ranking samurai just remove the noses and that's when it started to become a problem because from the head you can tell at least it's a warrior but if you just remove noses, some horrible samurai, what they did is that they went to nearby villages and started killing civilians and take their noses, pretending that they were actually, you know, look, I killed 50 enemy soldiers, some of which were, were then discovered and then they would be punished, of course. Just to elaborate a little bit on what he was saying there. This also exists at that time. So we today we call those McDojos. McDojos. They had those Completely. back in the days. Yes, Fake already. warriors who took uh, other yes. people's... And normally martial arts. Well, yeah, I mean, I suppose, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> if you want to put it that way, why not? I mean, again, this guy gets a lot of views, so he has the entertainment factor. So it's normal to, they, you know, he makes jokes. I think it's really cool. The lie is difficult. Mm. Even if, unfortunately, there is a lot of lies. Some people spend a lifetime in the lie. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> now we're going to go upstairs. This might be my favorite part of the exhibition. Welcome to the swirl area. Yes, you can touch, you see, when you Ooh. touch a piece. So this is this world. Is that's what wow. now you can see on details, like in everything. Oh, there's I've got to say, Germans are very well organized. I mean, look at that. Imagine pulling that one off in Italy. <laughs> Never mind. We will be like, I don't know, where do you put this sword? No idea. Just put it in the back, get some pizza. Instead, you know, the Germans are all well organized in Berlin. It's like you've got a computer, a screen for every sword, and you can click. It's amazing. Love that. There's a scratch here. You should get your money back. <laughs> this is not worth seven figures. <laughs> there is this old idea mm -hmm. uh, that comes from Taoism that the weapon is evil uh -huh. but 
in the hand of someone who is educated, mm. uh, evil things can become something for the good. Mm. That can help, for example, for justice, mm. for protection. So, of course, the one who uses it yeah. needs to be educated and have the right compass in the heart. I love this guy. I love both of them. They're great. Some very interesting here is uh, this one because it belongs to uh, uh, an executor. With gold, it's writing Statsu. Do. I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble there with the accent. Executor, he said, does it mean an executioner? Maybe? I'm, I'm not 100% sure what he meant. So, yeah. Tatsu, twice. Yeah. Do. Kiri Otoshi. Yeah. With that blade, I tested and I cut twice the body. Oh, so he cut two bodies in one. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So his job was to test the blades. Test the blade on human. Now let's show you some. That's also true, it happened and not all the time and they've finally put some regulations on it, but usually they would test it on prisoners that were gonna be sentenced to death. They did test blades sometimes in Japan on people, but usually they did it on prisoners. Not that it makes it any better, but I'm just saying, little info. At this point, I thought the tour was over. Wow. But I couldn't be more wrong. We have a, a part of the collection that is not yet in the museum. Very, very expensive pieces. These are the most valuable items that regular people never see. And now I'm about to get the surprise of a life. Hey, can I get that tour as well? I kind of like it. If you, you know, I'd fly to Berlin, get there with my wife. We get the secret room as well. It'd be amazing. Is that when he gets to wear the armor? And then there is something I prepare for you. Okay. This. Wait, yes. this is for me? Not completely, I don't think the museum will allow it. <laughs> I cannot take this home. This is what you're going to use today. You're going to Whoa. wear this. So wait, when he says the museum is not going to allow it, it was making the joke or like him taking it home. But is that an original or is it a replica? Because if this is an original, I'm on my first flight tomorrow <laughs> to this museum. Because I mean, oh, could you imagine wearing an original, even if it's from like the 1800s or 1780, it doesn't have to be from the Sengoku period, but imagine. I wonder if it's a replica though, because it looks, it looks really good. We prepare all this for you. We're gonna use those spear that are from some 16th century, 15th century. You're gonna use the nodachi, Oh, that's amazing. They are, highly, they are allowing him to actually touch the real stuff, not replica. So I have to assume now, I want to see if he tells us when the armor is from. You're going to wear all this. If you don't mind me asking, how much is this worth? It's better <laughs> for you to not know it. But just one thing, if you break it, you buy it. Oh my gosh, that's funny. It's, that's, that's really funny. It's a good video. Promising to not break anything, we start by putting on the shin guards. Then comes the breastplate, Whoa. followed by the arm protector. Iron fist. Very strange. Usually when I wear my samurai armor, I put the arms first and then I put the breastplate and the backplate on top. I wonder why he's choosing to go the other way around. I think it's a lot, it's very awkward to do that because usually you have to connect the cords underneath the armpit and I like to connect the cords on top here but it would be basically impossible if you're wearing the breastplate first. Not sure if there is a reason why he's doing that. But the weirdest part is the belt which is completely different from my regular karate belt. And finally, how do I look? Yeah, well, the belt he's wearing now, it's more of like the sort of belt that you would put as a decoration, as a decorative element to your armor when it's not on you and it's on something else. He shouldn't be wearing that one. He should be wearing a full on obi, but the large ones that, so it's kind of strange that he chose to go with that one because it's not going to be easy to mount your swords on that properly. But maybe they're not going to mount the swords, which would make sense. Then it's just there to kind of keep it together, I suppose. The face mask <laughs> and helmet. And now the transformation. Okay. Complete. I can't wait to see what I look like. Let's start moving. I to do the kind of movement. So I think he looks awesome. He looks awesome in the armor. Maybe not with those shoes. I would have provided some boots or some waraji, but whatever, whatever, it's fine. If it were me, uh, you know how he's wearing the haidate, so the apron, the protection for the thighs, I would have connected those inside so that they don't look like so flat and so large. Again, if this is an original, it's possible that the original button is not there. So not sure. And you know, karate? Yes. Okay, so a classical karate punch. Yes. would look like this. And now look, the blade yeah. is moving. Everything is moving. Yeah. So already I can see, because I don't know what style of karate he practices, but the fact, the way he charged his punch, and he charged it very low at the level of his obi, where his obi would go, tells me that he's probably practicing, he's not practicing neither Kyokushin karate nor Seido Kaikan, because they charge the punch higher. 
up here because I, I used to practice Kyokushin Karate and that was a difference with preceding other styles of Karate that I practiced when I was a teenager like Shotokan where they instead do it very very low and that's how he does it so I think he probably practices that sort of Karate. No movement of hip, no, no big motion. So how would you punch with a sword? I need to go in certain area. Oh, certain the opening. Area, okay. Certain area, yeah. yes. And then sometimes you can even use your hand to strike with the palm of your hand yeah. as ah. we go the regular, and then take the sword. Yeah, so I wouldn't do that. I would not strike with the palm of my hand someone in armor. And then he says, and then I would take the sword. That already is starting to look a little weird on the martial part. I've got to be honest, right? So, so far I've liked them, but this part, what the instructor is saying doesn't sound... Yeah, the fact that you try to attack someone where you've got gaps in armor, and you don't always have the gaps in the same places, by the way, it depends on the configuration, but in general that is correct. What he just said, though, about attacking with the palm of your hand, it doesn't sound like... I, I haven't seen it in any traditional style that I can think of within Koryu as a and, and even if I did I wouldn't really believe it as a move I'm a little bit of a skeptic when it comes to martial arts and only believing what works and the idea of taking the katana out of the saya from us I mean that's somewhat I needs to be an idiot to let you do that or maybe was sleeping but anyways that's the first thing little red flag don't like it next one <laughs> so the strike is always connecting with the weapon you're gonna move in profile Voila. But your knees and your elbow needs to make one because look, look the way you hold. Now if we take a long spear, okay. it's the same. Ah. And from here, you just need to shift back. So instead of twisting my hips to get power, I move my weight. That's a little, 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 very small point of constructing criticism that I would like to give to Jesse is please make sure that whenever you go to any instructor, ask them to tell, say, tell the audience exactly, okay, according to what style, based on what martial art. Because so far, all you told us is that he's an expert of Japanese martial art. It's an enormous umbrella term. What is he? Aikido, Karate, Judo, and these are all, well, Aikido is old, but the other two are too modern anyways. And then by doing my little research, I found out that this guy is trained in ninjutsu. And so far, I'm not seeing anything that I remember being taught during my experience with Katori Shintoryu and Koryu in general. And so it seems to be like that the training you're, you're receiving now is ninjutsu. And if that's the case, not a huge fan. I don't think it's very coherent. Just cross step. Cross step? Voila. Uh -huh. And now you uncross. Okay. And now send backward. Yeah. Palm, palm. Yeah, because if I walk regularly, I will... Uh, yes. Yeah. The armor doesn't protect everything. No. <laughs> so now look, if you take the sword, you uh. use the weight of the blade and the weight of the helmet to cut or okay. to crush. So I will go like this. Boom. Yes. <laughs> and at that moment, because it's heavy, yeah. I wouldn't lower my head like he did now, even though the instructor said yes. The only case that I remember recorded in actual Japanese accounts of samurai and Ashigaru lowering their head when they would be expecting to receive fire. So, for example, arrows or anything like that from the enemy, because the top of the helmet is the strongest and thickest part of the armor. Can I think of any other case? Not really. Maybe when you're charging with a spear, perhaps. I kind of remember that. I'll have to revisit. It's been a while. I used to read these in actual original Japanese, classical Japanese with a dictionary next to me because I only speak modern Japanese and read it. But classical can be very complicated, even for native speakers. But I don't remember any, anyone saying, yo, attack with your head low like that when you're striking with a katana. Do not remember that. When you're doing like this, you have to do this and use your legs to come back. This looks so different compared to what you see in the movies. That is because you're looking at ninjutsu, you're not looking at kenjutsu. That's why it looks different, if you ask me. So you cannot do big movement. It's going to be short movement. Yeah, exactly. Very short movement. Especially if I spend hours in this thing. Like uh, in a at battle. Least, at least one or two hours, easy. Yeah. And you don't have okay, the point that Jesse raised is very good. When you're fighting in armor, whether it be European armor, whether it be Japanese, any armor really, you do have to minimize a little bit energy consumption of what you do. Absolutely true. And you know, you're expected to stay on the battlefield for possibly a few hours, maybe under even rainy conditions, who knows? And therefore, that's a, that's a good point to raise. Absolutely well done, Jesse. Uh, no. To go to drink or to have a bar <laughs> or a cruise weight. My favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And then, for example, you're going to do something super cool here. 300,000, you take care. If I break it, I buy it. Yeah. All right. You pretend you go forward, and here, this is what you draw. Okay. Very lightly. And go, go, yeah. keep, keep on doing it. I step. Ah. The movement hides everything. For example, I do think he did it upside down, though. I think he didn't put it right because he did it upside down. One like that. 
Ah, so like you're just, hiding the yes, other... Just by walking, you go like this, and then yeah. whoo, then you use the legs on it. Uh-huh. Ah, and then... Yeah, all of this hiding, all of this stuff, it does really sound like ninjutsu training to me, which is a little disappointing. I still think the video is valid because it was amazing to look through the museum and the initial historical accounts were good. But when it comes to the section or the part where it has to do with martial training, my suggestion is, since the video did so well, make a second episode, but this time find a choreo master they can show you how to fight and there are several in Japan for example if you want to take a plane and that would be really good I mean in my experience when I practiced uh, Katori Shintoryu was the Sugino style and I did meet master Sugino was his personal interpreter for a few days I think he would be a great person to ask although then again he's against social media so he's not gonna let you post it on YouTube you might have to look for someone else but someone of that type would be a great idea I think to work with once again Do you see my sword behind the leg I don't see it so I try to snack it here and, and then, then this is where you Oh, yes. Or a cut. Actually, the cut is way better. It is, and okay. The, and the stab, actually. Would they have other hidden weapons? Or just yes. this? Here? Oh, this is oh, quite wow. very expensive and very heavy. Oh, wow. This is great on the battlefield. And when you turn, you reverse to give a certain kind of order or something Ooh, like that. Oh, okay. So I can and use it to communicate. Yes, to communicate. Yeah. And for example, someone sneak into the camp a palm, and from here push it on the side Shit. now direct Boop. and shift yeah. forward shift forward oh okay, okay. Uh, 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 you have to take care of this uh -huh. always oh, okay the sword because you win at the beginning that no yeah of course if i have someone with the little fan against someone with the spear or sword my money's on the person with the spear or the sword but imagine this would be a, a really extreme case scenario where i wasn't ready although that would be very strange because if you are in a camp like you said a military camp someone i would be armed to their teeth all the time. So I don't see any situation in which, well, you have the little fan and you're gonna use that instead of any of the many weapons that you would be surrounded and be wearing. But I suppose never say never, maybe something happened, you lost your weapons and you only have the fan. Absolutely, you could, I'm pretty sure that a, particularly a Sengoku period, somewhere I would be able to use anything into a weapon. Literally, including this phone. No. Maybe I'm losing my balance and I do this without yeah. knowing. So could an armor actually take a cut from a sword? Easy. One, two, three. Wow. One, two, three. Oh, please tell me that's not an original. Okay, I'm gonna say now, I don't believe that's an original because there is no way that this guy wouldn't get fired if he hit an original armor with an original sword. Like, no way. So I'm gonna say, I don't know if the sword is an original. I hope not. I hope it's not an antique, but if that armor is an antique and he just st struck it a few times, because yes, the armor, you won't feel it as much. You'll feel it a little bit, but it will get chipped. Oh, please tell me that's not an original. <laughs> Oh, nice. now there is the aspect of ukenagashi. Okay. From here, it slides. Ukenagashi. Okay. And that comes from the art of sword. Uh -huh. Even with this, you can do yeah. it ukenagashi. Even using the helmet, move forward with yeah. the helmet. Oh. Ah! <laughs> hey, you're paying for that, not me. Oh, they're gonna. Oh my gosh, he broke the maidate. He broke the little thing. I really hope this is not an antique, sorry for repeating myself. Anyways, one thing I don't like sometimes about martial training, and this happens not only with traditional styles or with ninjutsu, but it sometimes happens also with styles like, I want to say, Sistema, for example, where they tell you, okay, when he does this, you move this, take that, turn around, move this, and it feels like time freezes, where in reality, it obviously doesn't. Even if you are extremely skilled and trained, of course, you'll be able to do more things, particularly due to mes muscle memory, than someone who isn't trained or as trained. But that doesn't mean that you can just manipulate time itself and start doing this, this and that and this and that, and then the other person is not gonna... It's really difficult in real combat, whether it be a championship or whether it be life to death, to really successfully predict what the opponent is going to do. Which is why a lot of these scenarios, well, well, if he comes like this with the sword, just go towards it and hit it with your helmet. I mean, yeah, that's not what I want to see. In a situation like this, trying like a samurai for a day, I want you to tell me what the stances that a samurai would use, how you swing a sword, how you move forward, how you receive a hit, I suppose. But what I'm seeing now is what it is. No, I won't. <laughs> that was your idea. <laughs> you have to do the shuto with an armor higher than the karate shuto. So I would usually use this the sword hand to defend myself. All right. Yes, for example, if I punch. Yeah, then I will go like this. All right. Now, let's see with a short sword how you can do that. Like this. All right. So now that you did it, uh -huh. tell me what did you, what sincerely, what did you felt? in a tension and muscular way. Uh, it was not effortless. Why? Because I'm using the same technique that I did in karate. You see, for example, here you need to do that. Yeah. 
and that. Yes. If you do this with a sword, you create an opening. And that's a little bit different. Here, yeah. the movement will come from underneath in the last moment. Uh -huh. And from here, look carefully, yeah. here. The technique will be here, the technique will be here. Yeah. So no movement like that, no movement like that. No. And this, because of the spear too, watch carefully. I Wait, what's spear. this? Yes, it's a Wait, it has a hidden weapon? It can be used as a tool. Yeah. All right. Or maybe to open a door oh. or just to stab. Yeah. So we were talking about the shooto. Okay. For example, in's gonna go last moment. Aha. Uh -huh. And then yeah. from here, same. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> same movement. Mm. Oh, of course you can take it. Watch. Oh no, he's going to attack again. As I say, not impressed with the martial training of the, the sensei, but I hope that he will make an episode too with some other Kenjutsu style, a practitioner that can show us some actual techniques and not something you are either coming up with on the spot or they come from a tradition that I don't think has any connection whatsoever with feudal Japan and the samurai. Oh, that's scary. Step back. One, two, three. And now your hand is ready. Yes. Oh, for here. To control. And now you can use what rest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, oh. kumi uchi is everything where you know where you tie the hand together. Right. We have something called kumite. Kumite. So, for example, you're going to move on the side and go where you need. Oh. As you press. Yeah, kumite is just combat. It's just when you fight. In uh, of course, he knows that. I'm just saying for the audience, it's not exactly the same thing. <laughs> here, here you kick. Then you drop, stretching your arm like you hold the spear. Look, and you ah, have the point. Okay. So you actually you apply on me the way you hold the spear. Right. Exactly. Well, we're gonna help you, man. I think okay. you, you did enough with this. <sighs> I am quite overwhelmed, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah. Okay. No, but I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. I think Jesse did everything right. Just a little unfortunate when it comes to the selection of the of the person that, for the martial section i would have asked this guy to just talk about the history and then found someone else to show a few things that have to do with for example combat in armor but done according to traditions that we know at least an interrupted lineage up to a certain point for example the end of the single period beginning of the Edo period regardless it was a nice video i've seen much worse i mean and i did like jesse so i'm gonna subscribe to his channel and i'm gonna keep watching because i see that he has got some interesting videos there so jesse if you're watching thank you so much and again not an attack on you. I'm just enjoying fun having a little bit of a light-hearted reaction video to what you did. Keep it up and to you noble ones keep sending these. I enjoy reviewing these videos and uh, I hope that you enjoyed this review too. Thank you very much for watching and remember the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.